since Barry Mayer has looked at the clock. But there's no doubt about that one. I wondered for a moment if he caught um, his bat with his pad, but it just looked as though it was through him for pace. Yes, that was a very, very quick delivery, and it meant Pat Pocock had to come in and play out the last two balls of the day to leave England 10 for one wicket. Joel Garner, the wicket taker, Chris Broad, bowled by Garner for four balls overnight, and then come out the next morning against fresh bowlers. And that was something he couldn't avoid, and we could have done without Marshall's uh, gesture there, telling him to get off back to the pavilion. I thought that was uh, rather unnecessary. Anyway, Pocock has gone after a very good performance this morning. A bouncer and the catch taken very easily by Gordon Greenwich coming around from fourth slip. Quite a nice vantage point just above the cricketers. David Garner out like this edge bass and very similar shot, same sort of bow. But on this occasion, he might to get it between the fourth, fifth slip area and over the top there, but uh, certainly a very dangerous shot. Yes, he got in a better position altogether and he got over that and hit it with a slightly more cross bat, which I think is a way to play it against these quicker bowlers. Occasionally David Gower tries to play it with almost a straight bat and if he does that, the ball is going to edge into the gully area. If he plays it with a cross bat and gets a slight top edge, it will fly over the top and I'm sure that's the better way to play it. goes for 12 and uh, the one success in the England side this year is uh, Alan Lamb who's on his way out now Alan Lamb underway just turned that quite nicely kept it down brings him just a single if anybody is it any degree of confidence facing this space attack, it uh, must be Alan Lamb, who's bounced back into some uh, really cracking form in the series. 300s he's made to date. Just dropped the bat on that, but timed it uh, nicely. And we'll make a couple of runs out of this. So it sees uh, Chris Tavery into double figures. 50 or so up on the board for England. It's taken uh, some little time, but it's been desperately hard work out there. He's got it through this time, though. 
squirted away down the third man it's racing down towards that boundary and it's four to time Yes, it's not often you get it through the slip area, but uh, Chris Tavere managed to just find the gap between them there, and it sped away for four runs. You don't need to put any power into it, it's just a matter of playing it, if you can find the actual gap. The light worsened just before the luncheon interval, and in fact the umpires went off ten minutes before the scheduled time for close play for that first session. And uh, they were also having lots of other trouble, because several times they had to go and ask the spectators on the western side of the ground to, if they'd mind turning off their transistor radios it was very very upsetting for the batsman i can assure you that there's nothing worse than being out in the center and having that sound blasting across you 57 for three at lunch tavare was 15 and lamb four and it was really a very very difficult session as far as england were concerned we pick up play now in the fourth over after lunch seven runs have been added to take the score on to 64 and it's michael holding coming at the bowl Chris Tavare is taking strike. Tavare was okay, he's now gone, the deflection down the leg side, and Michael Holding has claimed another wicket. He picked up David Gower just before lunch with a very difficult delivery. That one, again, short-pitched and flying, and Dujon moved nicely to take it down the lake side. So England in trouble now, 64 for four. Lamb is not out 10. Ball goes up, almost may have just flicked the fingers of the right hand. piece of running Larry Gomes was the fielder coming in very quickly and he has gathered the ball in now oh, it was well read by Alan Lamb Ian Bertham's not off the mark and uh, that's been out today Pat Pocock without scoring Chris Tavare for 16 and David Gower for 12. And very nearly in both of them before getting off the mark. Very good delivery that. Well that's really cut back and we talk about cutting a player in half that one certainly did jackknifed here in both of them and uh, he was able to actually get out of the way because he did, just did maintain a sideways position there. It is a great help. Very close indeed. I just have sneaked outside off stump as the ball hit him. Yes, now watch that left pad come across. He's really, really thrust that left pad across. Gold. So the short ball followed by the Yorker right up in the block hole. Crash could have found its way through inside edge onto Bosom's feet. Another long chase for Desmond Haynes, but he won't be able to stop the boundary this time. Bacon has picked that up beautifully. You can class it as a chance, but both of them clobbered it right in the meat of the bat. And it was just a reflex action that allowed Holding to get his left hand to it. 
It's 83 for four. Both of them's gone to 14. He's gone past Lamb now, who's on 12. And another one. And he's gone this time. He just flicked the glove, couldn't get out of the way. Weston is delighted. Both of them's gone to 14. And real trouble now for England. 83 for five. And a short lift and rise in delivery. Tried to pull the butt away. Just that uh, fraction of a second too late. And uh, a simple catch to do, John. And it's Ben Fowler. Well, perhaps it would have been better if he'd had that arm um, uh, coverage first time out. So in both and caught between two minds there. He was going to play, then he was going to get away. Tried to pull back. in the bounce and I think for the first time in this match that ball kept low consequently left Lamb with uh, no price at all and some over there for Marshall getting rid of both them and Lamb in that one over and figures now are three for 15 from 11 overs so Fowler settles down to face Holding Good-looking stroke at the back foot down very sweetly through the covers. And that uh, won't do Graham Fowler any harm at all. Good to come back after taking a nasty blow. And play a really class shot there. Good shot. And again, the feet moves quickly and nicely into position, flipped it through the onside. Osman Haynes roaring after that. Michael Newton taking three, saves the ball. shot that you see uh, Graham Fowler try very often. So three figures on the board finally for England. <laughs> Those come up in the 40th over. That's through. Now for giving chase. It's a fair old move or two. Pick up, throw on the turn. Nicely. And a little right hander. He's coming back for three. Good run in. It's up in the air. Keepers after it. Three of them going for it. Could be a collision. shouted a call to both Marshall and Richards collide in there but, uh, I would have thought that uh, long leg running in here a much better chance than uh, slip or the keeper going backwards and, uh, surely uh, Marshall should have shouted for it 
just out the corner of his eye saw Richards appear at the last minute and withdrew that's gone yes this time Richards made no mistake of slip Widest delivery, and this time Fowler not quite there to the pitch of the ball, the outside edge, it's 116 now, and Fowler, who's made top score out there, has gone. Yes, in fact, Fowler never really got across to this, uh, his leg's gone about middle stump, and his bat's two feet away from his body, the ball's a foot outside of stump, and uh, really, it wasn't quite a full half baller, so there's only one place that ball could go, and that was into the slip, so which is what happened. intended but it's racing away there with Roger Harper the man giving chase all handy whether they come off the middle or off the outside edge just out of reach of Roger Harper four runs well Clive Lloyd has been having a long hard look there at uh, the slip formation trying to decide if he can afford a man from somewhere else to fill that gap between slip and gully that's exactly where the ball went and that couldn't be a more straightforward dismissal we've seen it happen a number of times where the batsman is not quite sure whether to go down or let the ball go or in the end play a stroke but i reckon Dalton was in about three lines there of just what to do. Clive Lloyd was the catcher. Joel Garner takes the wicket and it's 133 for eight. Let's see what Paul Allett's got to deal with. Well, that's a particularly good shot. Moved his feet uh, quickly, expecting it short, picked it away through the late side. Coming back for three, that's good running. The hurry. And, uh, comfortably home in the end. Jonathan Angu has pinched a strike now. 
Good news, mate. Five. <laughs> That's the end of it. A little bit unlucky there. He backed away. Would have missed by a good foot. Stuck him on the pad and casually went on and removed the uh, off bail. So the congratulations to Marshall, but uh, finishes up after bowling very well with a very lucky wicket there. Yes, it was a rather lucky wicket for Malcolm Marshall, but he bowled extremely well throughout that England innings, which finished on 162. 59 minutes lost for bad light. The fact that it wasn't an hour meant that the extra hour wasn't taken to take us through to 7 p.m. A lot of double-figure scores there for England, but no one managed from the moment Tavare was dismissed to get past the 20 mark. Richard Ellison, not out 20, a fine knock that, and Paul Allett, 16, gave the pair of them a very, very healthy partnership. 162, a deficit of 28, and full marks to the West Indian bowlers there. I thought they were absolutely magnificent today. The pitch was quite good, a lot of bounce in it, and it was quite pacey. Garner, 2 for 37, might not have been at his best today. Marshall certainly was. He bowled very, very fast and was very dangerous indeed. 5 for 35 from 17.5, holding two wickets and Baptiste one. But now the West Indies had a nasty little 20-minute session to get through towards the end of play and uh, it was decided that Ian Botham would take the new ball from the pavilion end. This is the first over of the West Indian innings. He's bowling to Gordon Greenwich. short and the Greenwich in position hooks it away down to long leg races back to the second those uh, two runs give West Indies now a lead of 30 three slips a gully short leg cover point mid off mid on and a long leg for Paul Allett and that's a confident start by Desmond Haynes he needs a score, he's had a pretty miserable series, but there's four there for him. And in fact, to Hayes' feet there must have been very, very close to the wicket as he slipped. You can watch his feet there and he slips really, very well back. Luckily, his left leg went outside the leg stump, otherwise he would have kicked his stumps down there. And the right leg, in fact, went farther back as well there. Well, that's one way. That's placed nicely. Now they're giving chase. He's got plenty of speed. We'll cut it off and they'll settle for two. And that 28-run lead for the West Indians was turned into 43 runs by the close of play, and they have all 10 second innings wickets standing, and that is a very, very healthy lead in what so far is a low score. England have their added to the overnight score. It's 22 for no wicket.